Hello and welcome to Math for Juniors. I am Professor Total Singh and this is my little assistant Kelsey. Hello friends. Professor has promised us some magic tricks today. Like I always do, magic with numbers. So here's my trick. I'll draw a rectangle and divide it into uniform rows and columns just like this. Uniform the rectangle will have a uniform no kelsey by uniform i mean rows and columns of equal length oops sorry never mind never mind now i'm going to number all the boxes in the first column 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 will the numbers disappear well i wish But that's not what I am going to do. Now I'll assign numbers to the last row of the rectangle as well. One, two, three, four, and five. There, done. Now what, Professor? Well, just with this numbering, I can tell you the total number of boxes that are there in this rectangle. Is it possible? You decide. I say there are 30 boxes in total. I will count them in no time. 1 2 3 4 5 Sure. It's always better to check than to believe blindly. 1 2 3 4 5 Wow, professor. There are 30 boxes in total. How did you know? Please tell us. <laughs> okay, okay. It's called finding the area of the given rectangle. Come, let's learn about area with math magic. If you look around your classroom, you will see a blackboard, a tabletop, wall of the room, the top of your pencil box, etc. You will observe that the wall of your classroom is the biggest, whereas the top of your pencil box is the smallest. Ever wondered? What exactly are we trying to compare here? We are comparing the area of these objects. So what is area? An area is the amount of surface a figure covers. This is usually expressed in terms of square units. A few example of the units used are square meters, square centimeters and square kilometers. The area of a rectangle can be calculated by multiplying its length and breadth as its opposite sides are equal. The formula to find out the area of a rectangle is A is equal to L multiplied by B, where A stands for area, L stands for length and B stands for breadth. The area of a square can be calculated by multiplying the length of its any two sides as all its sides are equal the formula to find the area of a square is a is equal to s multiplied by s where a stands for area and s stands for the side okay so that's the magic trick the area of this rectangle is 30 square units now let's put our new found magic to test Look at this X shape. Hey professor, the X shape is made up of two rectangles, isn't it? Exactly. So tell me my little magicians, how would you calculate the area of this X shape? Professor, I can measure the dimensions by using the ruler, no? Of course. Kelsey, you should first find the various parameters. Now tell me the area. Length into breadth, and we have the area of one rectangle. Multiplying it by two gives the required area, as the X shape is made up of two rectangles. Well, not exactly. Do you see this square in the middle? We will have to subtract the area of this square from the area of the rectangles to get the area of the X shape. Why? Because the square is a part of both the rectangles. and we end up counting it twice when calculating the area of the rectangles oh yeah i missed that 
plus the area is two times the area of rectangle minus the area of small square. Kids, this is just one way of finding the area of shapes. Come, let's learn about another method called graph paper method of calculating area of shapes with Mathemagic. Let us now find the area of the face of a book by using graph paper method. For this, you require a book whose area is to be calculated, a sharp pencil and a graph paper. A simple activity will enable you to measure the area of the face of a book. Let's check it out. First, place the book on a graph paper. Then mark the outline of the book on the graph paper using a sharp pencil. Have a look at the graph paper. Each square of the graph paper has a side equal to 1 cm. Hence, the area of each square is 1 square centimeter. On closely observing the graph, you will see that each 1 cm square is further divided into 10 small divisions. Thus, each small square has an area of 1 mm square. Coming back to the activity, let us count the number of squares covered under the outline of the book. Now multiply the number of squares by area of 1 square, that is 1 cm square, to get the area of the book. Let us now verify graph paper method by finding the area of rectangular shape of the surface of the book using formula. You know that the area of a rectangle is equal to the product of its length and breadth. Use a scale to measure the sides of the book and then multiply its length and breadth to obtain the area. You will see that the area of the book is equal in both the cases. Wow! This was cool! Okay, here are some figures with each small square measuring an area of 1 cm square. Show me the magic! I am ready! The first figure has an area of 9 cm square. Here's the second one with area of 5 cm square. Mm. Uh, but Professor, what about figure C? It involves half squares as well. How do we calculate its area? I was waiting for you to point that out, Kelsey. Let's find out with Mathemagic. In your daily life, we come across various shapes. Area of some of these shapes can be obtained by using direct mathematical formulae, like those of our rectangles and squares. However, there are many other shapes like the one shown on the screen, whose area can be computed only by using graph paper method. One such shape is the leaf. So now let's find the area of a leaf using this method. Beside the leaf, whose area is to be calculated, you require a sharp pencil and a graph paper. To start with, place the leaf on a graph paper as shown and mark its outline using a sharp pencil. Proceeding with the activity, count the number of complete squares covered by the face of leaf. After counting the complete squares, the question that arises is, how will you count the incomplete squares covered under the outline. Count two half squares as one complete square. Consider more than half squares as complete squares, whereas ignore the squares which are less than half. Now add the squares to get the total number of squares and multiply the result by the area of one square that is by one centimeter square to obtain the area of the leaf area of all other irregular flat surfaces can be determined using the same approach. I got my answer, Professor. Hmm. Do you know sometimes the area of a surface can be made to look bigger than what it really is? Really? No, you are pulling my leg, aren't you, Professor? Well, I can prove it. Do you know? Kids, don't be surprised if I tell you that some designer and decorator tips 
can make a smaller area appear larger by illusion. Well, the trick lies in playing with natural light, appropriate color scheme and minimizing clutter. Decorators use enhanced natural or artificial lighting teamed with light colors on the walls to make a space look more airy and open. Cool or light colors reflect light and give an illusion that the wall is very far away. So a very pale blue, green or lilac may make your small space feel larger. In contrast, a dark tone will make the wall appear to be very close to you, thereby making the room or space look really small. We all like to clutter our rooms, don't we? But have you ever noticed that when your room is clean and tidy, it actually looks a bit spacious? That's the reason designers advise using small furniture, which when tactfully placed, keeps the space clutter-free and adds to the sense of visual space. And now we get to revise! Yes, so here is a quick recap. In this module, you have learned the following. The area is the amount of surface a figure covers. The area of a rectangle is calculated by multiplying its length and breadth. The area of a square is calculated by multiplying the length of its any two sides. The area of irregular flat surfaces can be determined by graph paper method. Well, we will take your leave now to prepare for another fun-filled episode with numbers. Till then, you all take care and be good.